Two and a half years ago, I retired from teaching. Now, my whole life was spent in school. Either I went to school as a student, or I taught school as a teacher. And in fact, for a lot of years, I did both. So my entire life was pretty much reg regulated, regimented around an academic schedule. I got up early in the morning, I went to school. I came home in the mid-afternoon, not like other people, and then I oftentimes, because I also did ministry, at night I had to go out at night, and that was my life, except in the summer. I believe that it was the vocation that God had called me to, and I taught for 42 years, the last 40 at East Catholic. But two years ago, it was time for me to go. When word got out among the students that I was retiring, some asked me why. After all, I had taught some of their parents, and they always expected that I would be there to teach them. And for a very small number, I even taught their grandparents. Yeah. When they asked why I would re was retiring, I would joke with them and just say, it's because I'm old. And when I thought about it, you know, it wasn't really a joke. I really had grown old at East Catholic, and my time to leave had come. Now, some of you, I'm sure, have been to retirement parties. How many people have been to retirement parties? All right. How many people have been to their own retirement party? Ah, look at that. Okay. Yeah. They're really strange, aren't they? I mean, people will say really nice things about you. Like, uh, we can't believe you won't be here next year. Uh, what will we do without you? It seems like you've always been here. And my answer was always the same. You'll be just fine. Whoever comes and takes my place will do a great job. You won't even know I'm gone. Well, I think we see a similar situation in the gospel today. John the Baptist questions Jesus from prison. Uh, for his disciples' sake and for ours. I mean, John knows he's on his way out. And as uh, he also says in another place in the gospel, uh, I must decrease and he must increase. John can see that Jesus is doing the works of the promised Messiah. Those works were foretold in today's first reading and in the responsorial psalm. But John wants his disciples and us to know that the promised one, the world's judge, is at the gate. In Jesus, our God has come to save us. The whole liturgy of Advent takes us out into the desert to see and hear the marvelous words and works of God. The lame leaping like a stag, the dead raised, the good news preached to the poor. And the liturgy does that for us to give us courage to strengthen our feeble hands and make firm our weak knees. Our hearts can become easily frightened and weighed down by the hardships we face in our lives. We can lose patience in our sufferings as we await the coming of the Lord. But as St. James advises us in today's second reading, we should take as our example the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. And Jesus in the Gospel holds up John the Baptist as a great model of what it means to be a prophet. He asked his, John's disciples, you know, what did you go out in the desert to see? What did you think you were going to hear? John knew that his life, that life was more than about supplying your own needs and wants of your earthly life. I mean, after all, he lived in the desert and he, he wore camel's hair and he ate locusts and wild honey. Not exactly uh, a, a luxurious lifestyle. He sought the kingdom of God first, confident that God would provide for everything else. And Jesus, in the, later on in the gospel, would say the same thing. Seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and everything else will be provided for you as well. So John didn't complain. He didn't lose faith in prison when he knew his time had come. 
even from his prison cell, he was still sending his disciples and us to Jesus, our Savior. So we come to Jesus again in the Eucharist. He has already caused the desert to bloom, the burning sands to become springs of living water. He has opened our ears to hear the words of the sacred book and freed our tongue to fill the air with songs of thanksgiving. John sent his disciples to ask, are you the one who is to come or should we look for another? Jesus responded by saying in so many words, isn't it obvious? Blessed are those who find no offense in me. Once bowed down, captives to sin and death, we have been ransomed and returned to the kingdom of God. We've been crowned with everlasting joy. Raised up by Jesus then, we rejoice today. This day, Gaudete Sunday, Rejoice Sunday. We light the rose candle, we wear rose vestments, and we stand before his altar, eager to welcome him at Christmas, at the end of our lives, and at the end of time. Today, God says to us, rejoice. It is not the end. It's just the beginning. Rejoice. Rejoice.